Hi, thanks for tuning into my Steam Party how-to videos. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the player controllers. But before I get started, I need to create a uh, a new level to open the uh, the game up with instead of the actual game level itself. So I'll go ahead and create that real quick here. Uh, new level. Let's do empty default. And what we want to do the first thing is I want to change the game mode for this uh, to our game menu that we made in the previous video. So change the game mode of that. And then what we'll also want to do is Let's create a player controller. So the player controller is basically the player. It's the there's no character, there's no there's no uh, pawn. It's basically everything about the player, the, its connection, its name, its input controls, and then we attach those uh, two pawns to actually uh, play them. It's kind of like driving vehicles. So the the player controller can drive any pawn or any character uh, that it takes possession of. So the player controller is the player itself. So you can detach from a pawn and still be uh, having access to the player information. So we're going to go ahead and create that now. Uh, what I want to do is uh, if you don't already have a player controller class set up for your game, it's pretty easy. All right, so we'll go ahead and right click and as before and click on blueprint class. And then we'll go to, we don't want to click on this player controller up here. We actually want to click on Steam Beacon 1. Steam Beacon uh, player controller. There we go. Select that bad boy. And let's go ahead and call this PC for player controller. And then we'll go ahead and uh, call it um, <clears throat> menu, player controller for the menu. All right. And then we can go ahead and go into our game mode menu itself. And we can also... Um, uh, switch the player controller here to our PC menu. There we go. All right. So now that gives us access to the functions that we need. Now, again, if you had an existing class, like in previous tutorials, you can easily reparent it through uh, up here. I'll go ahead and close that. And the same thing for the C++ side. Uh, the C++ side, you can uh, reparent it from the Steam player controller here. Uh, the .h files over here. So, and then you can look into what are the things that um, are set inside of there. The main thing that we see uh, the play controller is used for is relaying information, notifications back and forth between the uh, game instance, uh, game session manager, uh, down to the player controller. So you'll see on the events here, player join party, player left party, player state change, play party owner change, party state change, party joining game, chat message receive, po party host connection failure, a party host reconnecting, party invite received. And basically, <clears throat> at those relays, come back to like UMG and you, uh, you're able to um, control you know, your menu items from there. So, uh, in fact, you can see send blueprint event notification, set message received, used mainly for UMG communication. So it's a relay, but you can hook into other things if you want to extend it for your own ideas. So, anyways, that's a little <clears throat> bit on the C side. Let's continue back to what our goal was in here, making this game menu. So now we have our player controller. We're all set up. Great. Um, I'll go ahead and call this one a main menu for the map. I haven't saved it. Save it. And we're all set to go. I'll hit play. And then I don't really do much of anything but move around. What I want to do is actually create a display. So I have to create a quick menu. So I'll go ahead and right click. Uh, and I want to create a new UMG class. UMG is uh, Unreal Motion Graphics. It's the UI interface uh, that you can create. It's pretty, it's actually, I like it quite a bit. It's definitely gotten really good over the last year here. So Nick Darnell has done an awesome job. Let's go ahead and call this main menu. And what we want to do is just something really quick and quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Let's add, um, let's add a text box so we know what it is. And we'll call it uh, main menu. Go to main menu. And we'll size the content. And let's let's change the font. This. I like that kind of stuff. Oh, we don't have a lot. I don't have any fonts installed on here that I want to change it to. So we'll go ahead and just increase the size. Uh, I think that gets your attention. It doesn't have to be fancy. We can add a little drop shadow to it. Uh, one, make it, and then give it some offset. Three. And I like three this way too. So now we have a little offset of it. Yeah. A nice little offset. All right, so basically uh, we have that, and then we have uh, another. We need another one, a button. We need to put a button on here to actually play a game. So we'll move that button here, 
and I'll size this up. Again, we're just doing this really quick, just for demonstration purposes, and then I'll add the same text down here. And I'll call that play game. Perfect. All right, and then uh, of course we don't want it all the way black, so we'll go ahead and change the color slightly. So I'll do my little tint just so it's easier to read. And then since uh, the hover's white, when I roll my mouse over, it'll blink. So yeah, for blinks. All right, that's pretty much all I wanted to set up for right now on the main menu. Uh, we'll go ahead and exit that out. And then what we can do is go to the player controller. And what we want to do in the player controller is we want to, uh, when we first start up, create some menus that we need. One being the main menu, another one is being the uh, Steam Party uh, menu itself. So we'll go ahead and start by creating some variables and functions that we need. Because um, we're going to do a, a copy over from the Steam example just to save some time. So we'll need to make sure the variables and names are named exactly the same. So I'll go ahead and create a variable called called UI main uh, party panel. And then I'll go ahead and over and click this. If you notice, um, you type in W underscore, just in fact, just party. Party is good enough. And you come down to object types, you see party panel here. We can set the object reference. Now, I did run into problem the, f the first time I went to rehearse this. Um, if this does not show up, you, what you need to do is uh, first save your player controller and go down to your Steam content. Um, if your Steam content is not shown, again, make sure your view options show engine content and show plugin content is uh, selected. And w when you're in there, look for the party panel and actually just open it up. And then uh, once you open it, then close it, and then come back in your uh, player controller. Um, then these should come up as an option. Type in party, you should see these widgets. So uh, the first time I went through this, um, they were not there. I had to actually go open up that content and then just close it, and then save my player controller, and then it repopulated the fields with those variables. So if you are missing those variables, that's that's how you get those to pop up. Um, so we'll go ahead and create the next variable. The next variable I want is uh, the main menu itself. Um, uh, let's go ahead and create main menu. Now you could do this different ways. This is just one way I'm doing it. I have uh, one layer for main menu, another layer for the uh, party panel for the Steam uh, plugin part of it. You could combine it to one menu or you could do a host of number of different things. So let's go ahead and create a couple functions we need. Let's call this one um, create party panel. And then call this one destroy party panel All right um, and then what I'll do is open up my steam example uh, party example it's great uh, to uh, copy some code over so what I want to do is go to my uh, event play here and copy this go to this project and go to my event begin play and paste it now at this point there could be a couple let's see here well, so there's something new that came over in 417, and that's these um, orphan pins, which is which is pretty pretty uh, interesting. Uh, so basically, if, if there's pins and connections that shouldn't be there anymore, they will turn red. So I'll disconnect these, and then I'll put this here. Party panel reference. We'll go ahead and change this to the main menu class. Main menu. And there was actually one more piece of the uh, the menu that we needed. So let's go back to the main menu of our project. And that was under Blueprints, Main Menu. That should probably be in a UMG folder. Uh, we do want to change one more um, uh, function. We want to add a function here. Um, I actually want to expose a, a function here. So what we want to do is go to Variables and hit plus and then we want to make this UI party panel. We will keep it the name, same name but this will be a reference to um, the party panel itself so I can communicate between the main menu and the party panel so this is a way we can communicate back and forth and this is going to be basically a uh, again change the variable type to the party panel also party panel party panel all right so save now the trick is we want to actually set this um, uh, up when we spawn it. So what we want to do is go down here to um, expose on spawn. Before I click on that, I make this editable. So we need to make it editable and then expose on spawn. And there we go. Hit save. Now if we go back to the player menu and um, 
reconnect that up to none and then main menu it should pop up a little thing down here here we go now we can actually connect that piece up uh, all right so now uh, the other thing we want to do here is we have UI main menu um, for some reason it's error it's easy easy just to replace that and the orphan pin will pop away so I like I like the, the redness of it because you can really see that the uh, the pins um, that need attention. So it was a matter of just reconnecting the um, noodle from the, the red one to the, the existing one. So there we go. Uh, let's see if we can compile now. Everything's green. It gave us a green thumbs up. Now that basically what this does is going to create um, a party panel and then also create the main menu widget. You can create this as a function too, uh, just for uh, purpose sake. I needed to uh, so the difference here and I need to set this UI main menu here, but it's not connected up for me So let's figure out what what's going on here. and Why are we getting this issue? Um, this is main menu panel main menu. Yes. 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 Yes Okay, so uh, Applying blueprints and then this okay well, the main thing is I never changed this variable type to the correct one. So we need to change that to a main menu, not a party panel. So that was a miss on my side. So troubleshooting live. Who knows, maybe some of you guys will run the same issues. Uh, yes, we want to change the variable type. And again, our nice little orphan pins like to remind us, hey, something changed. So let's do that and disconnect the other one. All right. That, actually, that feature is pretty awesome. I like that indication so now we're good to go now we have everything connected up correctly and double check all of my noodles are connected to something all right so basically uh, this is this uh, project example it's just well, however menu you, you create your own menu uh, you can do so uh, the create party panel I kept it all in here so what we'll do is open this up and we'll want to um, copy some of the um, information over from uh, the copy paste from the uh, example menu so I just pull it over from my steam example I'm going to do the same thing for the destroy party so I'm just gonna copy here and the same thing for the event graph I'm going to go ahead and go and uh, copy all these notifications so if you need to see all these notifications of when uh, players left a party and joined a party this is where they all hook into from the C++ site I showed earlier so I'm just going to copy those and copy those over too so let me do that here real quick make this up let's see if we have issues Right, cool. So the party panel is hooked up. Looks good. And basically, this is doing the same thing. Uh, we're creating a party panel, setting the variable to it, which is over here. We're adding to viewport, and we're setting the status that we don't have a party yet. Uh, and then we're taking, uh, uh, locking out movement and making mouse movement only, and then showing the mouse cursor. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's go to the uh, the next one, so we can get through this video. All right. And then this one's pretty straightforward, copy it. And this is just, uh, we're gonna remove from the parent and we're gonna set the pointer to its null. So we just get rid of it that way. All right, so basically we're, we're keeping two references to it. We're, the, uh, the, viewport, uh, the viewport has a reference to it and then our variable has reference to it. For it to get removed from uh, garbage collection, we need to take it off the parent. And then we need to remove any reference we have towards it, which is our variable. So that's why I set it to, to none. This is actually none, so it's a, a null. All right, so that uh, concludes the two functions. Now let's do our no event notifications. This should be just as simple as going into my um, example map and cut and copy everything we have over here. All right, let's see here. And of course, we'll have you know red pins if we miss something. All right, so I copied it over. We have everything already set up. Uh, it's pretty simple. And it looks like there's one thing that did not come over that was show loading screen on the main menu. And that's okay because we will sit there and make that function real quick. Uh, let's go to the main menu and uh, we'll go here to the main menu and we'll add that function called show loading screen. And so add function show loading screen. Again, this is optional on how you want to transition between your uh, map traveling. So I'll just create that function. And then I can go back to my player controller and do the show loading screen. There we go. And we'll fill that in later. So basically, now we have everything set up to actually display what we want to display. And I will double check that everything looks good. 
uh, yes. So if you if you're more interested on how these work, you can click on those and see how this functions work. We'll save it. it. Looks like everything's good. And now what we need to do is hit play, and what we should see is the main menu. Uh, play a game and now we have our scene party menu down here. We click on that. Uh, we don't have any friends online because uh, Steam is not turned on in high. So uh, we're already very close to being complete with getting the integration done um, from I've been showing the sides from both Blueprint and C++. Uh, if you have any questions of what we've done so far, please leave a comment below and I'll get uh, answer the best I can. Uh, that's conclude for this video. In the next video, I'll talk more about getting all come together and how to communicate back and forth. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.